Dean Sather here with the Becker County Historical Society. Today, kind of a little bit more of a back tour looking at things that we have in the museum that kind of help us do what we're trying to do. Now, what we're doing right now is standing in a room, one of our storage rooms here in the museum. And as you can see, it's got shelves full of wondrous materials. And part of the fun part of my job is being able to go through and look at all this material and figure out how best we can use this to achieve our mission. That is to tell the story of Becker County. Now, one of the things that I found was an absolute wondrous collection, and I'm going to share that with you today. It happens to be in this little box right here, an unassuming little plain brown paper package. So why don't you come on upstairs with me, and we're going to go through here, and we'll show you how we can use this to our own nefarious purposes. Ugh. Those steps get longer every time I climb them. All right, Raina, keep up with me here. Stories. Oh, I know. You've heard this time and time again, but that's really what's so important here. And it's not just single artifacts. It's not just stories themselves, but it's the combination of those things as we put them together and bring the stories and artifacts together that help us do the job of preserving and exhibiting the history here. When you come into the exhibit hall here at Becker County Historical Society, you see a log cabin, and in that log cabin are furnishings, uh, household goods, food items, but they're of a period that kind of give a wider picture or a more complete picture of what you might find in a log cabin back in the 1800s. Same thing with our summer kitchen. You look in there, there's a nice Hoosier cabinet, there's this beautiful wood-burning stove, which I would imagine could very easily be converted to a gas stove. Probably not. But all of the things that are in that summer kitchen give a wider picture of what was going on in people's lives. Well, now we can take it one step further. We started out in that room downstairs, and that's just one of the storerooms that we're going through and investigating and finding out things about this museum and something about the collections that we have here. And in that room, there were scrapbooks, boxes of books, teddy bears, a destroyed guitar, a variety of things. But how do we put those together? And as I was investigating that material in that room, I came across a very unassuming box. And in that box was a remarkable collection. It's almost, you could reconstruct a, a military career here during World War II. This is the material that was collected and sent home and part of a military career of an individual from Becker County who served in World War II. And as we talk about these stories, we can talk about how we can manufacture collections that represent periods. But here we actually have a collection of material that come from a single individual. And what is absolutely wonderful about this is because it gives us a fuller picture of what we might be able to look at. A lot of people that bring in materials that relate to a military history might bring in a uniform or an honorable discharge paper. Now, those are vital and important aspects of someone's military career, but it's the other things that maybe a lot of families don't recognize or that they do recognize but keep for themselves that tell us so much more. The first thing I want to start off with is this wonderful little commemorative piece. <laughs> Thank you, Raina. Now, this is something that came from Fort Snelling in Minnesota, down in St. Paul. Now, it's likely that this is something that was picked up when this individual was mustered into the Army. And what a wonderful little collection this is. It tells us maybe something about where the individual was initially stationed. But that's not the only part of it. We have more of a long-lasting representation of his career. Here we have the hat that he wore as a member of the VFW, Veterans of Foreign Wars. Obviously, you can see that this individual was a life member. Now, what's lovely about this is that, think about it. We know something about when he started his military career, and we know something about how he continued his association with that career, maybe after he got out of the Army. Now, of course, we do have a lot of the original documents. Now here's his honorable discharge from 1946. And this is the other thing I like, the separation qualification record. Now these are important documents in somebody's military history because, you know, it, it records the events in somebody's life as to what they were doing and how they participated in service to their country. But while we look at the discharge papers, 
there's something I found that I thought was kind of amusing. Um, as we talk about individuals being mustered out, and you can imagine that somebody serving in a, in a European theater during World War II, you get into a frame of mind and you become kind of accustomed to a certain lifestyle. And so, of course, the military wanted to think that through, and they provided you with a document going back to civilian life. And you can imagine after however many years in military service that this was probably just the document you'd need to figure out how to fit back in to life back in the States. What's fun is that it has just a wealth of information, not just about how people might be able to do that, but it tells us about how people were dealing with that topic back at the time, how they expected the servicemen to come back and be part of the states again. But that's not the only thing, because we've, we've looked at things that kind of relate to the, you know, the military, the meaty military part of it, but there's other things, things such as V-mail, some nice illustrated holiday wishes sent in honor of maybe a special occasion. Now we've got a lot of these, but there's some other fun things in here as well. Things that relate back to more of the personal side. Oops, pardon me. Photographs of family and friends, and maybe these were things that were carried along by this individual as he was traveling about Europe. That's one of my favorite ones. It's this gentleman and his wife. But it's a full, full collection. We've got this wonderful pillowcase from, well, it's Hanky's. And it's a commemorative piece from Camp Roberts, California, when he was stationed out there. Now, this comes with a, with a companion piece. It's a set of little bloomers here from Camp Roberts as well. Now, the fun thing is, is that these aren't things that generally you'll find on display in a military exhibit. But there's something that tells us a little bit more about where this individual was stationed. Here's a wonderful handkerchief commemorating mother. I believe that's the Army Corps of Engineers symbol on there. So we can get a little bit better of an idea of what's going on. Here's a, a very precious item that we have in this collection. And it's this individual's purple heart. And so we know that the action that was seen at least inflicted some damage, survived blissfully and came back and participated in life here in the States. Dog tags. But what a wonderful collection. And some of the, my, my favorite pieces in here are the postcards. So, you know, you can see some of the postcards are really nice. And we got, here's the, uh, the Merchandise Mart by night in Chicago. Here's the State Training School in Mandan, North Dakota. Oh, and here's some others. This is, this is a beautiful one. The Wrigley Building in New York, I believe. No, Chicago. Shame on me, Chicago. Here's Old Church, Washington's Home Church, built in 1773. But the fun thing is, is that a lot of these postcards were exchanged between husband and wife. And so they got a little personal, or at least a little more intimate. Beware of the bull. I'm staying here till the cows come home. <laughs> and my sweetie gives those seven day kisses they make one week. <laughs> What's important about this is that the collection here extends beyond just a simple military record of induction, which by the way is also recorded in this collection. Report for induction into military service. But it also has evidence of some of the activities that this individual experienced while in the Army, while serving overseas during the war, and also some of the activities that this individual was involved in after the war. Now, a lot of the things we've kind of gone through rather quickly, but I can tell you just from this collection, this is an exhibit in and of itself. It tells a wonderful story, a fairly complete story, about how people from Becker County experienced life in the military and how they extended our presence beyond the boundaries of our county. And it's a beautiful collection, and what 
a treasure to find such an intact collection here in the museum. This is what the stories are all about, and this is how they are made. And I want you to think about that with the materials that you have at home. How can your stories be told? And how might these materials help you tell your own story? My name is Dean Sather. This has been a little history of Becker County, a little process of history of Becker County. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you.